In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Welcome to another episode of Ask Father, brought to you by the Fatima Center. My name is Father Michael Rodriguez, and I am a priest of the Diocese of El Paso, Texas. Today we have a question from Catalina. I have heard some people say that Jesus was born in a cave and some in a stable. Which one was it? I was also reading Father Maudsley's books, and it seems every detail in God's actions has a reason, or lots of them. So then, what is the meaning for where he was born? In answer to Catalina's question, sacred scripture does not reveal to us exactly where Christ was born, whether in a cave or in a stable. Luke chapter 2, verse 17, quote, And Mary brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him up in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Close quote. Even though sacred scripture doesn't tell us an exact location where our Savior was born on Christmas Day, our most ancient traditions do indeed tell us that Jesus was born in a cave. For example, St. Justin Martyr, who was born near Bethlehem and lived in the second century, wrote the following, quote, When the child was born in Bethlehem, since Joseph could not find a lodging in that village, he took up his quarters in a certain cave near the village. And while they were there, Mary brought forth the Christ and placed him in a manger. Close quote. Today, pilgrims to Bethlehem are taken to Shepherds' Field, where tradition says the shepherds were keeping watch over their flocks when an angel of the Lord announced to them the birth of the Savior. The area is ringed with both natural and artificial caves. Some of these caves were used to shelter animals. It was in one of these caves where Jesus was likely born. Thus, we could say, both a cave and a stable. And at the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem, pilgrims are led down a steep flight of steps into a cave beneath the sanctuary. This cave has an eastern niche which contains the altar of the nativity. The exact spot where Jesus was born is marked beneath this altar by a 14-pointed silver star with the Latin inscription, Ic de Virgine Maria, Jesus Christus natus est. Here, Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. The significance of the 14 points on the star is to represent the three sets of 14 generations in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. The first 14 are from Abraham to King David, then 14 from King David to the Babylonian captivity, and then 14 more to Jesus Christ. Further, bolstering the belief that Jesus was born in a cave, both Venerable Maria de Jesus of Agreda and Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, two of the greatest mystics on the life of Mary, describe the birth of Jesus as taking place in a cave. So what is the meaning of this? Well, there are many possible reasons why our Savior chose to be born in a cave. For example, Bishop Fulton Sheen explains that one has to stoop down in order to enter a cave. 
Similarly, in order to find Christ and follow Him, one must also stoop down. In other words, practice the virtue of humility. The cave also represents how Christ was rejected by the world. The cave is a place hidden away from the ways of the world. It is also a place of silence and prayer. Many saints have lived in caves like St. Benedict, St. Anthony of Egypt, St. Jerome, St. John Chrysostom. And their example shows us how caves are a place of encounter with God. Obviously, with Jesus' birth, we have the greatest encounter ever between God and man. We could say that Christ's birth in a cave gave a special grace to caves to help one grow in the life of Christ or to help one grow in the life of grace. Again, again, is witnessed by the example of the saints and obviously many holy hermits throughout the history of the Catholic Church. Some of you may know Father Sean Kopsinski. He talks about how restoration comes from the caves. And some examples of this are King David hiding in a cave, the caves of the Maccabees, Covadonga and the Spanish Reconquista, and also hermits throughout the history of the church. Obviously, this theme of restoration coming from the caves, which we see played out even in the Old Testament, but most certainly in the time uh, after the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ. Most certainly this coming because the, the great restoration, that is, restoring man to the life of grace, Restoring man with the gift of eternal life because the great restoration is in and by Christ. And this began in the cave of the nativity. This, I think, is also rele very relevant for us today in the year of our Lord 2023, Christmas 2023. Because it's looking like it's more and more probable that many of us will also have to go to the underground, you could think of it as also hiding in the caves, in order to preserve our Catholic faith, to preserve the traditional Latin Mass, to preserve Catholic doctrine, and that whatever means we have to take in order to preserve our Catholic faith, again, even if it means going into hiding, so to speak, in the caves, we have to be willing and ready to do it, and hopefully inspired by the birth of our Lord, to know that restoration the restoration of our beloved Catholic faith, the restoration of our beloved Catholic Mass might very well come from the caves, from those who are faithful to Christ and faithful to the faith, even to the point of, again, hiding in the caves, so to speak. Some other possible reasons for the birth of Christ in a cave. The rock of the cave I think we can also see as a symbol of the church. Christ, even today, wills to be born in us through his church, never apart. Through, also we might say, the rock on which he built his church, St. Peter and St. Peter's successors. Perhaps the most important, we might say, maybe theological or spiritual reason for the birth of our Savior in a cave is that the birth of our Lord in many ways points to his death and resurrection, points to his passion, death, and resurrection. For example, the fact that he was also laid in a, the fact that he was laid in a manger, points to his sacrifice on the cross and the fact that he gives himself in the Holy Eucharist because the manger, literally the French word meaning to eat, was the place where the animals came to eat. And so there it's a very strong symbol also at the birth of our Lord of how he was born so that we could feed on him, so that we could feed on his precious um, body and blood, obviously the fruit of his sacrifice on the cross. Also, baby Jesus' circumcision, just eight days after his birth, 
when he for the first time sheds his precious blood for our salvation, it's again linking the birth of Christ to his passion and death. And so we see the same thing with Jesus being born in a cave. Because the fact that he's born in a cave, this points very, very clearly also to his tomb. Thus, his death and his resurrection. And one very important final thing to note, Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, she writes rather extensively uh, about her vision of the cave of the nativity. And one of the remarkable things that she notes is that it was the same cave in which Eve bore Seth. Seth taking the place of Abel, who, as we all know, was murdered by his brother Cain. This is, um, again, a very clear sign of how Jesus' birth in a cave, sort of in the, being born in the same place as Seth, clearly shows Jesus as the new Adam, as the one who comes again to restore in us eternal life and the life of grace. May God grant all of you a very, very blessed Christmas. And may the grace of Christmas help you to adore Christ as your true King. That is, may He reign in your mind, in your will, in your heart, and in your body. Merry Christmas.